Aloha and talofa to you. Welcome to the very first episode of the Converted Podcast. My name is Lima and I am your host. I'm so excited to share this episode with you. Um, I hope you have a Bible with you and an open heart as you consider uh, the wonderful and powerful story of providence, a story of God's providence uh, in the life of my dear and and beloved friends and family, uh, Rafe and Flory Barber. So check out this episode. Uh, what a great first episode. I mean, we kind of started this journey together. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you remember when we were playing rugby yeah. and then uh, Flory, you got invited to the Bible study. And then uh, was it Athena that, that got reached, invited later? Or? I reached out to Athena and okay. I said, hey, there's a Bible study. You want to join me? We'll go together. What year was that? 2011. 2011. Wow. Yeah. 2011. Yeah. So that, that rugby was nice, man. <laughs> yeah. And, and um, I remember the next study, we were kind of like, well, I was volunteered for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've come full circle. I can't, you know, I look back hindsight and thank God, man. Mm -hmm. And so uh, for the sake of all of our viewers, uh, Go ahead and tell everybody about your, yourselves. Universe. All right. <laughs> I'm Flory Barber. Um, grew up on a, an island south of Hawaii that you two are very familiar with, <laughs> American Samoa. And um, I grew up in Leone, Leone of yeah, Samoa. And I was born and raised there. I'm currently in Huntsville, Alabama with my husband <laughs> from Leone to Alabama, <laughs> and we have wow. three children. We have Ali'i, Kennison, and Nayatea. Yeah. Beautiful children. Um, Rafael Barber, go by Rafe. Um, also from American Samoa. For the viewers who don't know, it's a U.S. territory south of Hawaii, about a five-hour plane ride. Um, Hot. Yeah. It's right below the equator, so it's very, very hot. Um, I'm from the village of Fangalu, for the people who are from American Samoa, they they were, I, I would say they all recognize that village because that's where everyone was born. That's where the only hospital is at. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so when started off, you know, American Samoa went to school at uh, Matafao Elementary in Fangalu, graduated from there, went to Samoana High School, 2007. <laughs> <laughs> And then went to Hawaii for uh, for school, BYU Hawaii, and that ultimately that's where I met Flory. Um, and obviously through that, uh, as she stated, you know, eventually we moved to Huntsville. Wow. And that's where we're at now. You went to BYU too? Or? No, I went to Chaminade. Oh, okay, yeah, we met through a mutual friend. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Mutual friend. Yeah. He was All being right. cheeky, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, um, <clears throat> you know the. The, the goal of the podcast is, you know, just uh, showing the the real stories, right? To tell, tell them, telling the people our stories of how we kind of, we all grew up in Samoa and we all have some kind of religious background because mm -hmm. it's Samoa, you know, the culture is, uh, is centered on religion. And, and um, I think there's still places in Samoa that close on Sundays, right? So that everybody goes to church. But yeah, the goal is to to share, you know, our, our religious uh, story of how we went from one religion to another. If there are multiple ones that you've been through searching for God or searching for the truth. And, and so telling everybody that, hey, uh, you might be going through this right now. And, and we've been through it. And here's what we found, you know, and so tell us about, you know, 
maybe I'll start with Flory and then we'll go to Ray. Flory, tell us about your religious background. Um, I grew up in the Kaiki Church, also known as the CCAS, Congregational Christian Church of American Samoa. Oh. And it was started by LMS missionaries, London Missionary Society. And I think over time, um, after American Samoa became a territory, there was more, you know, U.S. influence in the church. And so kind of evolved from that LMS teaching to something else. And so um, I think the background is Protestant. And so I grew up in that. Um, <clears throat> then in college, I went to more of a Pentecostal church. And that was by choice. I Growing up in the Kaiki church, there were some things I didn't really like about it, you know, I didn't agree with. And yeah. so in college, I was like, okay, I'm free. You know, like I'm away from my parents. I get to choose what I want to do, look for a church that I think fits me. You know, it was like fits me. And um, I went to a Pentecostal church. Um, what what church was that? Was Word it? of Life. Okay, Word yeah. of Life. And it, it was close because we lived in town. And word of life was like around town so it was like okay it's right there you know and it's just convenient and close by at what point did athena join you in word of life like how long were you in that and then i i don't remember exactly oh, okay. but i think i had invited her to come because i'm a year older so okay. maybe when she came up and i've already been there a year or so and hmm. i said hey let's go you know the church together <laughs> yeah because when i got here that's where we went yeah because that's where athena went yeah <laughs> it, you know <laughs> when you when you're away from home you want to find a place of community especially if you've been going to church every sunday it's kind of like okay i grew up you know and it just feels weird if you don't go to church on sundays you know yeah. like after doing that for so many years and so to me i was like i want to find a church i want to find christian christian friends in quotations um, and just surround myself with a good community and support group. And when Athena came, we were hanging out. It's like, why not? You know, hey, yeah. let's go do this, do that, be part of the church. Is there a is there a, a thing when you were in that church? Was there something like a doctrinal teaching or or something that you struggle with that maybe caused you to rethink going there? A lot. Okay, okay like a, a lot. lot. Yeah. Um, initially. <clears throat> Okay, so I went to a private school in American Samoa from kindergarten to eighth grade. I went to a Baptist school and, you know, they say the sinner's prayer. They preach that you have to pray a certain way and you invite Jesus into your heart. So that was kind of normal for me, although I didn't really agree with it. It was more so, you know, there's no harm to it. You yeah, know, yeah. in my mind, it's like, oh, there's nothing wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> And so through those years, that's what I've heard. So when I came to um, college and I went to Word of Life, that's what they teach too. You know, uh, the sinner's prayer, and then you open your heart, you allow Jesus into your heart, and then you're a Christian. That's how you become a Christian. But um, after that, they tell you to go to an intro to, I don't remember what it was, but it was an introductory class. And in that class, the teacher said something that stood out to me that I still remember to this day. Wow. He said, you are saved and nothing can separate from you from Christ. And he said, you can live like hell here on earth, sin all you want and still go to heaven. And to me, that was the first thing that stood out to me. And I was like, this is wrong yeah. <laughs> in my mind, you know, it's like, Red flag. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was like, um, wow, that sounds like a plan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that sounds like a convenient religion, sign, man. Sign, hey, sign me up. Let's live it up. I'm going to heaven. Yeah. And yeah, wow. I, I don't know. You know, when you grow up in a home where you're taught right and wrong, and there's consequences to right and wrong, right? And then you hear that, and you're like, wait, what? There's no consequences to my sin if I live this way? So that was one of the first ones. You know? Wow. There were many more after that, I would say. I imagine so. I guess one of the things I wanted to highlight is sometimes we don't think about the things we're being told. Like, like we have that religious tolerance growing up mm -hmm. and we're like, oh, so long as it's related to God, it's okay. And I mean, the preacher is saying it, so he must know what he's talking about. So, so we have that religious tolerance. Um, but yeah, man, that that's, that's amazing that they said that and you were awake enough because 
true story, a lot of people are just asleep spiritually. You know, churches like will go because we have to go. And then, you know, you you walk right through the door and then you check out. You know, mm. you're not listening to what's being said. You're not being like the Bereans, right? You check the Bible to see, is he, what are you saying the word of God? And, and that's the danger of it. And, and that's what a lot of people have to, you know, learn to navigate. They have to, to pay attention to the teachings and, and pay attention to what's being said and compare it to the word of God to see if it's really coming from God or coming from man, because if it's come from man, then we're putting ourselves eternally in danger. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, what, what was the background, bro? Um, you know, oddly enough, we, we were talking about, um, you know, American Samoa being a really religious country, you know, every day for the people that's not familiar with the area at six o'clock, you know, they ring the bells and there's this thing called Sa, and that's essentially family prayer time, that's right. you know, and that's one thing that stood out to me. Um, you know, we, we were talking about just it being a religious country, things are closed on Sunday, but oddly enough for me growing up, I, we, we didn't have, we didn't go to church. We're, we were that family probably the only family at the beach on Sunday. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so we didn't, we didn't go to church. We did, we did, we did, we definitely, uh, you know, they probably just drove by, saw us, you know, they're going to Kongai, you're like, oh, look at those white people, you know, it's, it's funny. So yeah, growing up, we didn't go to church. I, I did have a couple of uncles, you know, that were uh, preachers that were, uh, it was Baptist in nature, Lukopakipaki. Mm -hmm. So we did, you know, if I ever slept over my cousin's house, we would go to church with them. Mm -hmm. Um, but as a teenager, I was baptized as a Mormon. My whole family was actually, so it was, oh. it was me, my siblings, my mom, and then my grandma, uh, we, we were, we were baptized Mormon. My, my grandpa was, he, he, he grew up Mormon. He served a mission. Um, and, and we actually started going to church because of him when they moved to, Samoa from Hawaii so that we you know we did the we did the uh lessons with the missionaries everyone you know we all got baptized and so from my teenage years up until you know going to BYU in Hawaii I was, I was like I grew up uh LDS or Latter-day Saints wow yeah oh, man. so so was there like certain practice that Stood out to you and yeah. you were kind of like it's it's funny I'm not sure about this you yeah know? it's funny you say that I, I I'll be honest in saying that from the beginning I I, I kind of just I had my my doubts I, I didn't want to be the black sheep I didn't want to be the only one that didn't get baptized the whole family was getting baptized That's real yeah but the first thing that stood out to me that I thought was crazy for those who are not um, familiar with the Mormon faith um Joseph Smith, their founder, you know, made in America religion. Yeah. <laughs> Joseph Smith, their, their founder, he had translated some plates, uh, golden plates that, uh, that an angel had told him where the plates were. He translated. And then I remember asking the missionary, oh, so where are the plates at now? Thinking it was at the Salt Lake City headquarters or something or in like a church museum. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, uh, they gave it, they gave the plates back. And I was thinking, I was like, wait a minute, why, why? the plates were on earth for like, thousand plus years buried in the ground you know in new york and it's like that was the first red flag for me like why, why would you take the plates back the one thing that we can see you know actual evidence yeah that that didn't really sit well with me from the beginning and i just thought it was odd but but the the you know I, i'm pretty sure most people will agree with me in the sense that they don't um it's it's a very much feel-good religion in the sense that you, you you can't really question things if you question things you lack faith they bring up james you know one five a lot mm. and you know if you, if you lack wow. wisdom ask him and, and you know they they talk about the promptings of the spirit you know the holy spirit guides you so if you're if you're lacking any kind of wisdom if you they, they don't really and it's interesting too that's one thing you know now being a christian you know like first thessalonians it talks about test all things hold fast so that is true if if Mormons were truly Christians, you know, they, if they actually read their Bible and they tested the things, you know, that their faith says, I would think they would not be Mormon right now. But because because the from the top down, they preach, um, just pray about it. You know, you lack faith. Just have more faith. Don't question. Don't question these things. And, and I think that's why a lot of people I'm pretty sure they have these same doubts. A lot of my family members or even just former you know friends and schoolmates mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty sure they all feel that same way but it's like just, just drive on just yeah it's, just, a, it's it's a great 
organization, you know, if you take the religious stuff out of it, very family oriented, family first. And I think, I think that draws, that's what keeps people in. It draws them in and it keeps them in, you know, it's kind of like, just don't, don't talk about the crazy stuff. Don't, uh, you know, yeah, it's, it's very I interesting. Also, I also think that the Mormons don't, um, <clears throat> they believe that the Bible has error, right? So they focus more on the extra books. Yeah, they have four books, you know, part of their Bibles um, with the Old Testament, New Testament being one. Um, and then they have the stuff from Joseph, the rest of it's pretty much translated from Joseph Smith. But it's, but it's interesting because even over the years, um, you know, you, 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 you can see all the discrepancies mm -hmm. and it's so easy to see, but it's just when it's like, oh, just have more faith, you know, just have more faith into not questioning, not testing these things. It's, it's pretty crazy. Even like the missionaries, you know, the missionaries are called elders and these are, 18 yeah. year olds plus unmarried you know and then what does the bible say about elders you know first Timothy know. three titus uh qualifications of elders and deacons and um the husband of one wife you know and these guys are you have to be unmarried you're not married yet. you're not yeah. supposed to be married to no go on a children, mission very yeah. young no it, experience exactly exactly elder so and so exactly yeah. Yeah, that's that's yeah now um Flory, so we're, we're kind of jumping yep. back and forth. So, Flory, um, tell us about how you got to the Bible study and and um, basically take it from there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, while I was at Word of Life, um, there were more things that, you know, you sit there and you attend worship and you hear speakers and then you start to, like, think, Okay, you start to realize this is not biblical. Check. This is not biblical. And I wasn't there to be like, you know, looking for bad things, but you know, behind doors, you, when I'm alone, I'm studying my Bible and I'm like listening, like that's not what the Bible says, right? So a lot of those added up. <clears throat> wow. And um one of them was like at a life group that I was at, which I really did like about the they had life groups, they did Bible studies weekly. Right. Weekly. Weekly. Like, like, they met uh, together. One day a week? Yes. Oh, wow. One day a week. Mm -hmm. They met together in people's homes because it was a big, you know, it's like a lot of people in the denomination. Um, they would break it down where you have a little group where you're meeting, you're meeting in people's homes and doing mm. Bible study. And what I remember was meeting in the home and we were studying a lot of these. Uh, <clears throat> there was a lack of Bible study. <coughs> I think that's one of the things that I had issues with was we were studying books written by man and then you know a little sprinkle of verse here a little sprinkle of verse there but i was there to i, I wanted to study the bible and i would often ask like <laughs> Excuse me. why why are we studying the why are we studying these books and not studying the and not bible? Yeah. i was like i would like to study the bible more and it was like well this is what our pastor our pastor said to study and mm -hmm you know you go over and over again it's like book after book after book and i'm like where's the bible <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> you know and i was like okay <laughs> and then later on you have these people they call prophets that'll come preach and um and one guy said he was from a foreign country i don't remember where exactly but he had said that a prophet from my church says that jesus will come while he's still alive and he's 90 something. I don't remember the exact age, but that's what he said. And I'm there sitting and I have my friend and I turned to her and said, that's a lie. <laughs> that's a lie. And she's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. why? And then I said, because nobody knows when Jesus will come. Not even Jesus himself, you know? Yeah. In the book of Matthew and I was telling her, not even Jesus himself. Like, are, is this guy saying that that guy's greater than Jesus, you know? And I had a lot of questions. And my friend would say, well, he's an anointed man of God. So that's what they, you know, tend to go to, you know, that's how they answer your questions. He's an anointed man of God. Wow. And a lot of that kept happening. A speaker would come and I would, we would meet for our Bible study groups. And I will say, 
I did not agree with what this man said, and they will say he's an anointed man of God. You know, don't you dare <laughs> question the anointed exactly. man of God. Exactly, and I kept getting shut down, yeah, shut down. You know, black sheep, you. <laughs> and so like over time, wow. I just got you know it was just very discouraging for me because it's like you have these questions, but there's no biblical answers. You know, you, yeah. it's just you have to follow what they say because he's anointed. And it got to the point where I actually stayed home and like stopped going more often. Like mm. I would go maybe evening on a Sunday here and there, but I didn't go as much as I did because I didn't see the point. But at the same time, I wanted like a spiritual, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. And, wow. and so during that time, I had mm. met um, Pisa Soli, who's a Christian and a member of the church. And um, well, backtrack i had a friend from high school who is related to pisa's son's dad okay okay <clears throat> and so she hit me up and she said hey flory i have a nephew who just moved down there with her mom and i was wondering if you could go to uh, visit them or go to his graduation or something like that and i was like okay i can't go to the graduation but we can invite her to come over to you know something that's going on at church and Athena was with me too during this oh, wow. time. Like she, she and I were going to church, and um, I don't remember what year it was exactly. I know that we were baptized in two thousand eleven, but it took some time, so it was like a couple years before, I guess. Mm -hmm. And we reached out and we invited her to like one of our plays, and so Pisa had come over to one of the plays that we had. I don't know if it was an like Easter play or a Christmas play, but. Um, she came over and we met her and you know you you may meet each other and you make more plans and you keep in contact yeah. and so that's basically what happened you know and and Pisa was very um she was very friendly uh very nice you know person mm -hmm. and I was like I want to be her friend you know it's mm -hmm. one of those people where you're like I wouldn't mind being in contact with this person and she um also asked if she could have our emails I don't know if she asked Athena, but she asked if I, <clears throat> and then she asked if it would be okay that I receive daily devotions, oh, you wow. know, like, so I guess she uh, subscribed me to something and then I would get those daily devotions in my email <clears throat> and I checked my email. And so I'm reading these things, you know, and, and uh, Pisa and I are now friends on Facebook and I see her post and she's posting stuff about church she's posting things that her son does uh they did like a cadet where they memorize scripture and stuff i don't remember okay, what yes. it was called christ cadet okay that was, that's uh, probably it oh uh, stephen khan yes late stephen khan that was his ministry and we had a son at the time and i was like i want my son doing those things you know i want him interested in those things um learning those things and um and so just keeping that relationship open i think really helped and knowing also um, that uh, when I had questions, I would write her about the Bible, you know, yeah, I'd write wow. her, what are your thoughts about this? This is all on Facebook. And then she'll um, direct me to like a blog post or like a article or something, but very biblical, all yeah. very biblical. And I would read it, I'm like, wow, this makes sense. You know, yeah. a lot of it was like leading up to the moment, I believe. Um, <clears throat> Wow. And then um, and also like just seeing how she lived her life, um, you know, a lot of times people claim to be Christians, but they're not very, you know, in the way they live and the, they're not living a Christian way. Right. Or behaving like a Christian and seeing her uh, live that way. To me, it was also a testimony. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, there's something different about this yeah. church. There's something different about what she's doing. And then um, there came a time where she had invited us to a seminar where Wayne and Donna and their family had come to do here. Well, actually, I think they had gone to a mission trip in Samoa. Yes. And mm -hmm. on their way back, they stopped to Honolulu and they did something. I don't remember what it was, but we had finals that week. And I said, I'm sorry, I can't make it. I have finals, I cannot come. And then she said, well, they're willing to meet with you one on one. I was like, what? Wow. <laughs> I was like, they do that because where I go, word of life. Oh, man. Those people are untouchable, you know? <laughs> I tell you, man, you know how many people have said that to me that I make the time to study with them and how much they appreciate that? Like, it's, it's amazing, man. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. 
Keep so going, that's going, that's one of the um, things that stood out to me too. And I'm like, wow, these people are really, I, I thought it was like very humbling. You know, it was like, they're willing to actually talk to me. Whereas where I was at, it was like, they have security and you can barely get a high end or anything. And so um, I had asked Athena, hey Athena, I'm gonna go study with this um, um, man from Peaceless Church and if you'd <laughs> like to come, you know? And so I invited Athena over and then we had that study. And I think we had a study for like two to three days, I don't remember, but that's how we um, got baptized. After yeah. studying the word for a few days, we were like hey. question after question. And all these questions I've had was like anointed man of God. You know, you just have to listen. You just, just have listen to, to the yeah. anointed man of God. And those nights, I was like, I learned so much in just this short amount of time yeah. about the Bible than from all these years of seeking. So church. when you ask your questions to Wayne, how did he answer? Like, did he just tell you the answer? Biblically, no. He would say, turn to this yes. book, chapter, and verse, you know, and they had us read it out. And we're like, the answer's right there. The answer, it was just so eye opening, you know? It was yeah. like, it was amazing. Yeah. Wow. Man, just hearing that, you know, it just reaffirms what what the Bible tells us. If you seek the Lord, you will find it. Right? And, and you grow up a Baptist school, a Iki church, mm-hmm. moved over here, went to Word of Life. And then you would ask Bible questions and they say, Hush, just listen to the anointed man of God. You know, just take what he's saying. Don't don't worry about the Bible. And then to connecting with Pisa, I mean, you just see the providence of God all over that. And and uh, that's the story, you know. It's like you look back and, and, and so there's more to this because um uh, in that same study where Flory uh, uh that Flory talked about, we were all in it. It was me. Lori, Rafe, and Athena, and then Pisa, and 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 uh, Wayne and Donna Collins, and uh, I remember that too. That night when I joined, I thought I was religious, and you know, every question I asked, um, <clears throat> Wayne Wayne didn't say he he didn't say the answer. He said, "Open your Bible and read it for yourself," right? And that's that's. That's uh, something that we don't see a lot of. Like we just like pe- a lot of people, they just take what the preacher said and not open the Bible and read it for themselves. Mm-hmm. Like that. and to me, that's spiritual complacency. When you when you you know leave the eternal security of your soul um, solely on someone's word instead of the word of God. And, and so I appreciate you sharing that now there is an interesting twist <laughs> in this account i'm gonna let rafe continue the story from that point on because we were all in this same study and and then i'll chime in when i when i can yeah Boy, amen. Yeah, amen. I, yeah i remember that night too i, I was definitely sh- uh, shocked to say the least when i would ask him a question i remember specifically asking him about drugs too like oh what does the bible say about cocaine use and, and he was like well i don't know let's see what the bible says you know and he just book chapter and verse he he, he led us through it I, I, I remember being impressed with him like wow like this every question that we all had he he was very like he didn't have to like google it on his phone he was says like, let's see what the bible says let's see what the bible says and he answered it, it with the biblical answer for every question that we had yeah i yeah. mean i mean um that's what second timothy two fifteen says right mm-hmm. study to show yourself approved unto god <laughs> A workman that he did not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Mm-hmm. Like, you know the word of God, you know the word of God. Yeah. People have questions, you know where the answers are. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're called to do, you know, in First Peter 3 15. Uh, be ready always to give an answer for the reason of the hope that we have. Yep. Right? To defend the faith or help somebody come to the knowledge of the truth. Mm-hmm. And um, we kind of all went through that journey, and, and this is why we're sharing it with with everyone, because we want to help people that are jumping from one religion to another and 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 not having the opportunity to really get the answers that you are seeking from the word of god uh maybe you're going through the process where that flory went through of 
you know, just being told, well, he's the man of God, just believe what he says. Don't, don't just take someone's word for it. Take God's word for it because at the end of the day, his word matters. My word don't matter. Their word don't matter. It's the word of God that, that matters. Um, t- tell the story about your conversion, bro. Like, like, I know there was some time involved. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, well, let me, let, me, let me kick it off and then Rafe can, t- can uh, continue. So that night, um, uh, that, the night that we were all baptized, I was baptized, Fleury and Athena was baptized, and, and Rafe was still, you know, thinking about his decision. Now, I'm going to let you take take over from that point on. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's important, bro. Yeah. So I remember distinctly um, with Flory, she was saying she wanted to get baptized as we were making our way up to, you know, the the tap, the, the baptism for, um, area. And, and I was I remember thinking to myself, I, I was thinking back to, you know, how I shared earlier, how I essentially got baptized in vain. I didn't want to be the only one um, not getting baptized. And I, I, don't, I wouldn't want to say it's necessarily pride, but I, I guess I felt like I wasn't, if I got baptized that night, it, it was to because Flory was getting baptized and everyone else was getting baptized. It wasn't because I made the decision on my own. And it was almost like a deja vu moment where it was like, I can't do this again. I can't, <laughs> I can't jump into another religion. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just because of, uh, Pressure. pressure because everyone especially my wife you know what i mean yeah. and you guys are getting baptized too so i, I definitely felt it, it was weird i was the only one out of the four that didn't yeah. get baptized um but the biggest thing was just me not wanting to do it in vain you know and then um you know we not too long after that you know i got deployed um flory flory met um was it the 2012 or 2013 2012, I think. Cindy, Cindy, and Glenn Collies. They came yeah. down for a marriage retreat. Since then, and then from that point on, Flory kept bothering us, <laughs> bothering me about moving to Huntsville. Moving to Alabama. Moving to Huntsville, where we where we are now. And um, wow. Yeah. So the, it was it was kind of like I was one foot in, one foot out the whole time. You know, I was still wrestling with is Mormonism real, and that that was hard for me too. You know, you just even though I started off kind of on the wrong foot, like not really getting baptized for the right reasons. I still, for the most part, I mean, I, you know, I did everything that I was supposed to do. You know, I, I went through the motions in the sense that, um, you know, doing what was expected of me, you know, I wasn't necessarily like, um, I don't know what the word is like, I, I was definitely trying to be the best Mormon that I could essentially, yeah. you know, going to the temple, doing all the things <clears throat> that I was supposed to do. I went to BYU, um, and, and I was, I wanted to go on a mission too, as well. You know, that's just all the things that are expected of you, mm-hmm. essentially. So, so leading up past that point of 2011, up until even before we moved to Huntsville and even later, it, it, it was a, it was a hard, um, like I didn't, not identity crisis, but it, it was weird. It was, it's almost, it's almost kind of similar. Like I didn't really get shunned from my family, but it was kind of like being Mormon was my identity Mm -hmm. and then just wrestling with the idea because just being present, you know, going, I wasn't going to worship every every week before, but just on and off throughout those years, hearing the truth, you know, and then just being convicted, like, okay, this is, maybe maybe this is not real, you know? And that, that was, that was kind of weird. That kind of shaken my identity. And um, so just, just hearing the truth on and on up until we moved to Huntsville in 2015, and it was a weird limbo where, you know, we had Ali, and in 2017, we had our second kid, Kennison, and, you know, I'm teaching them what the Bible says. I don't, I don't think it's real, but I also don't think it's fake. I don't, I'm not denying it. <laughs> I'm sitting in this lukewarm. Sounds like an identity crisis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not going against what Flory's teaching them and I'm and I'm teaching them too. You know, we have the blue cards and all that for kids sing and I'm helping Ali learn his stuff, you know. I'm, you know, we're quizzing him, we're doing family Bible time. Flory led it most of the time, but but I'm participating in this stuff and it's like it's, it was almost like a out of body experience where, you know, I'm I'm sitting there asking Ali what the books of the Bible are, but it's like do I even believe in this, you know what I mean? Is is kind of I didn't deny it. I wasn't an atheist, but I also wasn't like hundred percent this is real so mm-hmm. I think I think finding out 
fi finding out for sure that Mormonism wasn't real, that it was like a false religion almost, that kind of shook my core and, and it kind of put me in this lukewarm, like neutral situation, uh, you know, even throughout the time that we lived in Huntsville. But it's, but it's so weird that it got to the point where just living and hearing the truth and being surrounded by it, it, it's almost like that became my identity in the sense where I almost started like judging people. I wasn't even Christian, you know? I'm like, all these people, they're not even coming to church every week and I'm here every week. I'm not even a Christian, you know? I'm, I'm a Monday, Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Wednesday, you know? As I'm like just judging all these people, using the Bible as a sword, you know? Like I, I, I was reading my Bible, I learned a lot and, I, and it wasn't like I necessarily believed it. And I also at the same time, wasn't rejecting it you know but definitely using it as a sword judging other people you know i was in yeah. the, i was in this weird self-righteous phase where mm -hmm. it's like I'm, I'm doing all the right things you know i'm, I'm living righteously yeah. uh, but but the reality yeah. was i wasn't yeah. saved you know and then fast forward to 2022 i was talking to my little brother baby brother uh, in law eric's and um it, it's just weird you know back in my self-judgment mode you know i was cross lighting for a lack of a better word to him yeah, yeah, yeah. and just explain to him the, the consequences of, of his actions, you know, and it hadn't been a full year since his dad had passed away, mm -hmm. you know, and I remember telling him, you know, like, don't, don't you want to be with dad in heaven? Cause, cause his, you know, his father had gotten baptized and, and, it, and it was that point that it like convicted me, um, preaching to my my brother-in-law you know yeah. telling him the consequences of his sins you know like that right there just struck a chord with me and was just like man look at this like look at me preaching to this guy and all, everything that i said to him applies to me and and even though even though i was living righteously i, I was trying my best to do the right thing and and live that way ultimately i was not saved and, and i knew that that day and that's when yeah. I, that's ultimately when i got baptized yeah March 14th, 2022. Uh, yeah. So, so that day I was, um, I was someone's Titus's Titus. birthday. Titus's <laughs> birthday party. I was doing something. And then, uh, uh, was it you that came to me? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So Rafe came, that day he was baptized. Rafe came to me and said, can we go up to the office and, you know, maybe do a study with Eric? Yep, Cause he's yep. thinking about, you know, um, yep. obeying the gospel. Um, now, Rafe knows this now, but at that time, I was thinking, oh, this is a great time to also, you know, <laughs> try to spur this guy up, you know, like to to help him see, because I was seeing what he just described, okay, because so we would have biblical discussions in our house, and he would quote scriptures to us, and, and I'm like, when is it gonna click, you know? <laughs> like, come on home, brother, you know? And, and, and so during that study with, with Eric's, we were studying about the, the eunuch, the Ethiopian eunuch, and how, you know, he needed someone to guide him and, and how Philip opened his mouth and he preached Jesus to the eunuch, that's in Acts chapter eight. And then the eunuch learned that he needed to be baptized. And, 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 uh, and uh, he said, see, here's water, what's stopping me from being baptized? And, and then long story short, Eric uh, made the decision, like he's, he, he made the decision, he wanted to be baptized, I would always um, uh, do a check of commitment, so so I would ask people, uh, is there anything that would stop you from doing this right now, could I stop you from doing this right now, and he wanted to do it right then and there on that day, so I was prepping the, the water, the baptism water, and then uh, you know, I was thinking in my head, like, I was praying in my head, like, oh, I, I hope Rafe, you know, I hope today, you know, and so, so after filling up the baptistry, you're familiar with our congregation, there's a baptistry, and there's some back rooms that lead to it. After filling up the baptistry, I walked to the front, and I saw this guy, he's, he's like in a zone, like, like clearly you were thinking, mm. like clearly there was, I could see it, there was a lot of heaviness. And so I just asked, man, I, just, I said to hey, bro, what about you? Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. like, what about you, man? And oh, man, that was, uh, praise God, man. That was one of the, uh, that was one of the uh, greatest days of my life as a minister was 
seen you baptized after you know to backtrack you know that night we were all baptized and you did it man i cried that night because i was like man, why didn't Rafe do it you know why didn't he do it and then throughout the years because in 2015 was when i started going to the memphis school of preaching and there were a lot of times at the school of preaching i thought about you man because you were because <laughs> you were right there in alabama and then no uh, I was thought my mind went back to that to that night multiple times. Why didn't this guy do it? And there was a point when I came and visit you guys in Huntsville, and we tried and we talked about it. Yeah, man, but you sounded like you were agnostic, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you sounded like I was like, where is this coming from, man? Yeah. Like, I feel like he's 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 drifting, you know, mm. from believing. Yeah, like you said, you you weren't sure, and so so. You know, there were times on that drive back, I was telling that thing, man, like, I feel like we're losing Rafe. You know, I feel like he's, mm -hmm. he's, you know, becoming a humanist or an agnostic or, uh, you know, just not a believer. And so, you know, I thank God for, for the church there in Huntsville, mm -hmm. uh, the, the people that, all the programs that you participated faithfully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then Glenn and Cindy, and just you know, um, that was one of the days, bro. At March 14, I mean, and that was last year, 2022. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, praise God. You know, guys, um, what we're sharing with you is is like it's, it's a it's the it's the religious journey that. A lot of you can agree that we all kind of go through and ultimately in, in that journey, you want to know the truth because Jesus said that you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. And, and it should be our pursuit when it comes to matter of religion or spirituality. It should be our pursuit to look for the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth because you know uh you know i grew up in samoa i was methodist and I'll, I'll do an episode myself i was methodist uh for for all i could remember i was baptized as a baby did the whole sunday thing and then uh and then uh, left you know that's the typical samoan kid right you grow up you go to college or in the military or something yeah. so so came here, went to school, went to Word of Life, um, uh, and then and then Flory got invited to the Bible study. Athena got invited by Flory, and and then we were kind of there by default as husbands. And I look back and I say, praise God, because what if what if uh, what if Pisa never invited? you or what if you guys never made that connection right mm -hmm. but clearly when we look back it's like it's all god's doing like he saw our hearts and that we wanted to know the truth and that we were tired of man-made religion and and uh and he kind of put people in our lives i thank god for for wayne and, and donna you know uh, um, for their zeal and and uh, those of you who know Wayne and Donna, they're very bubbly, especially Wayne. Wayne is a bubbly mm -hmm. man. He's a joyful man, uh, um, and he's an evangelist. And thank God that he had the courage and the ability to share the truth. Or who knows where we'd be, right? I don't know. I seriously cannot see my life without that journey because yeah. it's like it's a, it's a defining moment. That's the time when, for me, uh, I started seeing everything in proper perspective because I thought I was religious until I was challenged, until I looked into the word of God and, and it telling me how wrong I was doing religion. And, and that's a lot of people today, you know? And so as we, as we close, um, there's some people going through the journey right now, right? That they're not there yet. Uh, maybe they're in a different church and whatnot. Um, 
for someone that may be Mormon yeah. and, and kind of going through the doubts that you're talking about, yeah. like what, would, what, what would be your encouragement for them? I, I would say, you know, for, for a lot of these Mormons, it, um, they, they claim to be Christian. And I would say, you know, if you truly are a Christian, just, just read the Bible, you know, just read the Bible. And I believe every denomination, um, when you hold it up to the Bible, only one stance, the Lord's church, you know, none, none of them will pass the test because, you know, it's either, it's either God approved, it's in the Bible or it's man-made. And when you actually read your Bible, um, you know, one, one thing, one scripture I wanted to bring up, Hebrews 13, 8, 9. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be carried away with various and strange doctrines, for it is good that the heart be established by grace, not with fools which have not profited from those who have been occupied with them. And you can correct me if I'm wrong in making this distinction. You know, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In the same sense, John 1, 1. Um, the word was God, right? Mm -hmm. So in the same sense that Jesus Christ is the same, the word is the same, right? What it's not going to change these truths, you know, in the Bible are, are, are timeless. Yes. And, and one thing that any Mormon, if they're honest with themselves, their God is a progressive God in the sense that Mormonism has changed all throughout the years. You know, you, you started off with polygamy and then it's like, Oh, that's against the law. You guys are not going to be a state if you continue in your polygamy. Okay, God changed his mind. We're not polygamists anymore, right? Yeah. I'm sure you know many Mormons, myself included, growing up that never drank Coke growing up, you know? And if you read their scripture, you know, DNC, Doctrine and Covenants, it says uh, no hot drink. So they interpreted that to be coffee, tea, you know, and caffeinated drinks. Fast forward to today, BYU in 2017 is allowing caffeinated drinks. So it's like they don't even believe what they they don't even believe what they write down themselves. You know, their their scriptures forbid hot drinks. Yeah. And and it was it was it was interpreted as don't drink coffee, tea, caffeinated drinks, Coke. I never you know, we didn't drink Coke. I know plenty of people didn't drink Coke growing up. And now they're trying to say, no, it's not caffeine. You can have caffeine. So I'm thinking, okay, if that's the case, then you can just drink coffee. Just don't drink it hot, right? Yeah. It's like they don't they don't even know what they believe. So from like the polygamy to not polygamy, um, the caffeine situation, uh, black people not getting allowed to have their priesthood. You know what I mean? Up until interesting. Yeah. So they believe that uh, it's the the seed of Cain. It's even in their scriptures too. Wow. Yeah. They believe that black skin is a curse. And essentially, you know, for the longest time up until the civil rights era, black people were not allowed to have the priesthood, which is pretty much the pinnacle of being a Mormon, you know? Yeah. And then it was, and then it's like civil rights era happens and it's like, okay, you guys can have it. So in the same sense of me bringing up the Hebrew scripture, it's, it, is, is your God really a progressive God or is this just man-made doctrine by the so-called prophets? You know, it's, 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 it's interesting. It, funny story. When I was, you know, when, when I was baptized Mormon and even up until the time when I was at BYU, the prophet at the time, Gordon B. Hinckley, in 1990, he gave a talk about um, the word Mormon because he, because, because typically, you know, they're the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They don't mm -hmm. refer to themselves as Mormon, but everyone calls them Mormon. But in 1990, he gave a talk. They do, they do two, two like general conferences a year, April mm -hmm. and October. And in October, he said, Mormon means more good. So like embrace the word, you know, don't look at it in a negative way. And, um, you know, it's funny because they have like LDS.org, Mormon.org, Mormon Tabernacle Choir. Everything was Mormon, Mormon, Mormon. After that, it was great. It's, it's fine. You know, let's embrace it. It's funny that he, in that same talk that he said that Mormon means more good, uh, the, the now prophet, I think his name is M. Nelson, I think so, something Nelson. He gave a talk six months earlier about the correct name or the correct usage of the church. This is M, I think M. Russell Nelson, whoever the Mormon prophet is now, his biggest pet peeve was the word Mormon. And so it's so funny, right? So you got the current prophet in 1990 saying Mormon means more good, you know, embrace it. We love it. And they're naming everything Mormon. 
six months earlier, it, it, they, they call it the Quorum of the Twelve. This mm -hmm. Nelson guy was part of the Quorum of the Twelve. He gave a talk about using the correct name of the church. It was his pet peeve. He, he hated the word Mormon. He didn't want people, he didn't, he didn't want to be referred to as Mormon. Fast forward 30 years later, he becomes the prophet. What happens? Change, change, the, change the name. No Mormon.org, no LDS, no Mormon Tabernacle Choir. And, and I, I bring that up to bring, is, is, is God really a progressive God? You really have to ask yourself that. Is the God of the Bible, is he changing with the times? Or are these man-made principles based on these men who are prophets? Yeah. Really ask yourself that. And if you truly are a Christian, and then you you'll you'll you know what First Thessalonians says: test yeah. all things, hold fast to that as, to that what is true. So don't don't just follow the promptings of your heart. You know your heart is deceitful. Read the word, and and you'll find the answer. I believe that. Yes. And and um, if you're like. If you're like wanting to meet one on one with someone that would study, um, if you're on Oahu, hello, that would be me. Um, uh, but uh, we have a network, and and um, I I know that there are people elsewhere in the world. Uh, we can find someone who knows the truth, uh, who can meet with you one on one to study the Bible with you. Um, Sorry, what would be your words of advice to? someone and, and that, that kind of that is going through the same journey as you like baptist school kaiki church word of life and what would be your advice to them uh very similar to what rafe said um study your bible study your word um and when there are things that you question and you know you're not sure about ask the questions don't be afraid to speak up and challenge you know mm -hmm. and say why do we do the things that we do? Can you show me a biblical answer? Show me in the Bible, right? Yeah. And always ask for the Bible. Um, don't go with what they say only, and don't always, you know, say the anointed man and you think, okay, yeah. he's of God, so I'm just gonna take his word for it. I think that was the biggest thing for me <clears throat> was I'm studying my word and I'm not there to nitpick everything, but when you hear something, because you're studying your word, you know, oh, that's not right. That's not what's in the Bible. And then you bring it to the people and, you know, whoever the leaders or whatever, and you ask the questions like, okay, why do you say this? Or why, do, why is it this way? Why do we do this? And uh, really challenge them. And if they give you a biblical answer, then you study that in the context and say okay is this really what it's saying or are they just using scripture to support their views and so i really am heavy on studying the word and challenging um teachings yeah where you're going you know the churches that you're at because right now i've studied with some family members and you know after a while they're like no i don't want this and they're going a different direction and they have a religion and so in order for me to you know, I can't, they'll tell me the good news. Hey, this is what we're doing here at my church. This is, mm -hmm. And I don't completely turn it off. I'll just say, oh, well, continue to study your word. Yeah. You know, continue to seek the truth. I always point it to the Bible because that is where, if they're really studying their word, they yeah. will be able to pick it up and be like, this is not right. You know, this is not what the Bible says about these certain things. So. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Um, Paul to uh, Timothy in 2 Timothy 4, verse 2, uh, he gave him that charge, preach the word, be instant, in season and out of season, reprove and rebuke and exhort with all long suffering. And then verse 3, he says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. In other words, there will be people that don't want to hear the Bible. That's why the encouragement is, hold to the word of God. It's the answers are in there for our religious questions. The Bible is our only guide in all matters of religion. God made that claim about the Bible. Second uh, Tim uh, Timothy three and verse 16 and 17 tells us that all scriptures are given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect or complete thoroughly equipped unto every good work. She came from a, um, a Baptist background. 
uh, and then um, well, Baptist school, and then uh, Protestant uh, influence, local Kaiki and Samoa, moved to Hawaii, word of life. He came from um, the Mormon, was there something before the Mormon church? No. So, so, so what, what age was, you were in high school? Like 13. Mormon, yeah. 13. He came from the, the Latter-day Saints or the Mormon religion. I grew up in the Methodist church and I did some shopping around, you know, at one point I was a Seventh-day Adventist and then, and then uh, visit the Mormon church several times. Uh, and then moved here, went to Word of Life, right? So, so all of us came from these different religions. And when we opened the Word of God, we ended up in the same place, right? We ended up with the same conclusion, which is what the Bible was meant to do. If we all follow the Bible, like Rafe said, we will only, we will soon realize there's only one church in the Bible. And, it, and that's what the Bible teaches. Jesus said in Matthew 16 and verse 18, that he was going to build his church, not his churches, in Ephesians 1, verse 22 and 23, he talks about how God has given to Jesus to be head over all things to the church. So he's the head of the church. And then it defines the church using an illustration, which is, is his body. So he's the head and we're the body. How many bodies are there? In the same book by the same author in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 4, it says there's only one body. right? But what happened to the, the world of Christianity. We know what happened. Man would, man decided to follow man-made teachings instead of the word of God. And that's why we do this. Because we want you to see that um, if your journey uh, to understanding God and religion is starting somewhere else, you will find God if your goal is to find out what the Bible says. And you will arrive wherever you are starting, right? Uh, if you're starting from the Baptist religion, Mormon religion, or the Methodist religion, and that's where you're starting, we encourage you. You need to go to the Word of God, and we're here to help you do that. Thank you so much, guys, for, for doing this. Um, I really enjoy doing this with you guys. Uh, um, all the glory to God. Any final words before we conclude? Oh, thank you for this opportunity. Yeah, it was, man. It was a great chance. Yeah. Well, uh, follow us on Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, we're going to put out our, our episodes every uh, third Thursday of the month. And this is a trial for January. If more and more people are open to doing this, we're, we might have a weekly, weekly episode for you. But Test the things that we share with you. See see if the scriptures that we use match up. You know, check the word of God to make sure that what we're sharing. But thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you. If we can help you in any way, please message or contact us using the contact information below. God bless you and take care.